pumping lemmas. I mean, in, in the 60s and 70s, there were different variations of these pumping lemmas, and they come up for different things, and you'll see lots of different references. But they're all called pumping lemmas. All right, so for me to explain this idea and why you get this pumping lemma, you need to see an example. Otherwise, it'll just be too abstract, and it won't make sense. So let's, let's start with A, which is our start symbol, and write a parse tree up on the board here. You know, starting like this, A generates BC, BC generates BA, C generates AB. I'm going to keep going for a second, but before I keep writing, I want you to get a sense of where we're going with this. I'm going to write a parse tree down for a particular string. The string is going to be 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. When I'm all done, this grammar can generate 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. This is going to be the parse tree for that. And you're going to see the 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 along the leaves on the bottom, where they would always show up in the parse tree. Now, in doing that, what you're going to find is that if you start at the bottom at one of these leaves and you work your way back up to the root, there's a unique path from every leaf back up to the root. What's going to happen is that path is going to be long enough so that one of these non-terminals, A, B, or C, is going to show up twice on that path. And that's where this loop quote will occur. And so that's where I'm going with this. I'm going to make this parse tree big enough to guarantee that if you pick any spot at the bottom and work your way back up to the root, that there will be a duplicate, that one of these non-terminals will appear twice. Right? I'll talk about that again in a second, but I just want, to know, I want you to know where we're going with it, and then I'll finish the diagram and we'll, we'll do it. All right, so this B generates 1. This A generates BC. This B generates 1. This C generates AB. BC. You need a big enough example to show this, so it's hard to do this with a smaller example. So stick with me here. It's not too much bigger, but it's still a little bigger. CC. Zero, zero. Zero, one. Oh, I lied. I meant one, 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 zero, zero, one. I meant one, 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 zero. Now I didn't lie. One 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 zero 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 one. One 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 zero 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 one. Okay. So look at that. Write it down. Check it. Make sure you get it. And we'll talk about where this duplication comes up in a minute and how the loop actually manifests itself. How many non-terminals here? Three. Three. How long of a path do we need until we get a duplicate? Four, right? So as long as I have a parse tree that's got a path of four or more, then I can find a duplication starting from the bottom working to the top. Let's pick a long path. Let's say down here, and I'll work my way up this way. B, A, C, A. The first <coughs> duplication that occurs, I'm going to star these values. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. And I got some color here, so let me color these guys. There's number one. There's number two. So this is where we find our duplication. Not what's the first state that we come back to, like the finite state machine. But give me a long enough string. Go down to one of the symbols here. Work your way back up the parse tree. And the first non-terminal that repeats, star those two and remember those two. Why did you pick that one to go back? Did you just write I just, right. And if I had started here, it would have been C and C. And if I had started here, C and C, right. You, the, right. you can get different loops. But there's definitely one, and I just picked this one to show you. I picked this one for a reason because it, it illustrates it more generally than the other ones would. But, but the other ones would have been fine. But it has to be from a path that has at least one. Right. 
Right. So you tell me this, since Donna mentioned that it's very, very important. How long should the string be to guarantee that I have a path of at least four in a Chomsky normal form grammar? And do everyone understand what I'm asking? Because if I pick a string that's really short, I might not get a path of length four. And if I pick the string that's just, you know, five symbols, say four symbols long, I could have just emptied out the B, A, A, B right over here, and all the paths are length three. I wouldn't have had a duplicate. So for short strings, you're not going to find duplicates, the same way you won't find them for finite state machines. You've got to have a string long enough. How long? Hmm? Some exponential thing, some log thing, which, which is it? Well, the, the path is the log length, and so the, like the string needs to be... So let's say the number of non-terminals is n. Mm -hmm. Give that a name, so n is 3 in this case. Exactly. How long does a string have to be? Two right, it could. The worst thing that happens is that, is that it doesn't string out. You can't find long things. It's all bushy, they're all equal. Mm -hmm. So how far down would it have to go to guarantee a path of length uh, 1, 2, 3, 4? So, one, two, three, and I think four levels is okay, right? Because this could be the top. So four levels is okay. And that's going to mean two to the... Two to the n plus one. Two to the n plus one. Some exponential number. You don't have the leaves don't count in that? If, let's put it this way. Decide which way you want to do it, and it's either two to the n plus one or two to the n... Plus one, plus one. But the point is that it's exponential in the size. That, that, that the strings have to be pretty long reference to the number of non-terminals. So if I said, you know, you've got 10 non-terminals here, the strings that end up having pumping in them for sure are approximately 1,000 symbols long. Okay, once you get a string 1,000 symbols long, I know there's going to be pumping in it, around 2 to the 10. Okay? I don't even care so much about the exact function. I just want you to realize that it's not a linear thing like it was for finite state machines. You know, where the length of the symbols that have pumping is just longer than the number of states in the machine. Here, it has to be longer than 2 raised to the number of non-terminals. Non-terminals don't act the same way like states did before. You have to get much longer strings. Yeah? So it's 2 to the n plus 1, not 2 to the n plus 1. Right, okay. right, <laughs> right. And I should just mention, actually, none of this really matters because once you're... The details don't matter, I'll tell you why. If you're going to really use this pumping lemma, it's going to be used the same way we did it last time. I send Chris Walker home. I say, come up with a grammar, smarty pants, for this set. And he works all night long, and he says, I got one. And I go, you're lying. Mm -hmm. And he says, no, I'm not. I really got one. And I say, how many non-terminals are in your grammar? And he says, there's six non-terminals in the grammar. I say, OK. And I just got to make sure you know, that I give him something bigger than like two to the seventh. I give him some big string. But typically, you know. Instead of me asking him, you know, how many symbols are in your grammar, I can just say, well, tell me how many, tell me two to the number of symbols in your grammar. I can just tell him to do that exponential calculation and call that n and then work with that. I just have to get a string that's longer than, than some amount and, and keep the, the pattern right. And we'll, so, so I can hide that, that two to the n conversion and make him do it. All right. Well, we haven't even said what happens now that we got this duplicate. We just talked about that the strings have to be pretty long to get the duplicate. And we'll write it all down formally when we're all done. But let's first go through this one example. So again, Chris Walker goes home. He comes up with this grammar. I find a duplicate in the grammar. How do I prove to him that there are things that can be pumped up? Here's what we're going to do. And this is very much a grammar and a graph trick and a tree trick than it is a looping thing than it was before. Here's what we're going to do. See this thing? That's the tree that's rooted from the top one of the things that matched. I'm going to copy it over here. Don't copy it yourselves if you hate writing. I'm just copying this so you can keep thinking. And I can show you where it goes. And then you can look at it and make sense out of it in a minute. Okay, did I copy it okay? Looks all right. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell Chris to take this rooted part of his parse tree that's sitting at the top match, 